Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer. Randy Moggins has the evening off, so I will be flying solo, but I have one of my favorite guests. So, um, you know, back to just, I mean, we can say what we're going to talk about, but ultimately we'll end up just making it up as we go along and laughing most of the way. Uh, Sonia Barrett is back with me. We're going to continue our series on the human game, and she has um, portaled in from whatever world she comes from. So, Sonia, <laughs> welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Oh, thanks to be back. And yes, in the very beginning, we've been having a discussion. I've been trying to figure out this headset um, because I do look very alien and we both have acknowledged that I am, but I just didn't really want to look the part <laughs> in this <laughs> headset. But in order to hear Emily, I'm going to have to wear this headset. Okay. So, all right. Are you like, does it sort of protect you from the frequency? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You figured it out. I like that's that's why that. Sonia is in such a good mood. She's not affected by 5G. <laughs> it's because of that headwear. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm actually in a bubble. It's like the frequency is just like, yeah, I'm just inside this. Bubble. Are you in the blissed out bubble? Yes, I am. I am, <laughs> I am just super, super blissed out. <laughs> you, you have a real affinity for the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Can you scoot over a little bit to your oh. left so we can actually see you? Okay. There That's why I was trying to be over there so you couldn't actually see <laughs> me. <laughs> so people couldn't actually see me. Right? Darn. Okay, well, here I am. People love seeing you laugh and smile, so don't deprive them of one of their few joys in life. <laughs> Gosh, I know. We laugh a lot. I laugh a lot. I know I do. Right? Because it's fucking yeah. funny. It's yeah. funny. Everything's funny. <laughs> Everything's funny. <laughs> Everything is funny. Yeah. All right. So before we get into uh, our plan is to talk about, uh, you know, one of the things I love most about Sonia is that uh, things that she wrote 5, 10, and 15 years ago are, you know, more pertinent and I mean, people didn't even understand what she was talking about then <laughs> I, I, what, what, you know I'm, I'm, I understood what she was talking about but I thought had really thought that by now everybody would understand what she was talking about and unfortunately there's just a precious few and most of them are in our groups here so to some of you we may be preaching to the choir but there's interesting new avenues we can explore at that so we're going to look into some of her older writings before we move on next time she's going to be back we're going to do we're going to get into something she's working on right now but we're going to take a, a dive into some of her old work um, and we're going to talk about an article she wrote and i'll link to it several years ago called um uh enough with this blissed out agenda but before we do that sonia's got a lot of new stuff going on she's got a lot of activity over on her uh portal <laughs> and um let, why don't you go ahead and tell people what's going on in sonia's world well, what's going on in my world? Well, I we just completed a six-part um, workshop called the the reprogramming experiment, and that was uh, really incredible. Um, and that was basically an opportunity for people to uh, to really observe themselves, to observe themselves in a way that they hadn't before. Um, and the observation was necessary without judgment. And you know how mm -hmm. tough that is, is to observe without judging. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was an incredible uh, exercise for almost two months. And people had profound experiences, pr profound changes. Just, uh, I think a lot of people were just amazed to see what they had been thinking and how they had been operating. Because you think you know what you're doing all the time, but you don't. You know, because you get caught up in in the um, normality of your behavior and your thinking, so you don't notice. But anyway, so this was absolutely profound, and um, it's now available. So if somebody wasn't able to be part of this uh, this experiment with yourself, 
it's on the website now. So um, yes, and you're going to hear other people explaining and talking about their experiences, almost as if you were part of the live workshop. So I, I encourage people to um, to really think about looking into it, getting it. And I always like to say, it's not really just about, you know, I just want to sell products. I have to say that's been a, a time for me with some of that because mm -hmm. um, there's so many people that do, I do hear them. It's just all about just pushing their products. And I tend to forget to mention stuff on, you know, on interviews that I'm doing, which is not really great for business, but at the same time, <laughs> That's, you know, that, that's not at the forefront. I am, when I tell you that I think this is a great idea for you to look into this, I'm really telling you from, from, my, from my being, not just, oh my God, I want you to place an order. But I think this is really good um, for anybody at all. And then the expansion portal, this is new, the expansion portal with Sonia. And this is from members only. And so we're meeting once a month. And, and there's, I have to say, there's a forum uh, that's on the website for members uh, only and just incredible dialogue that is that we um, we are having and, and I foresee unfolding as we go along. But we meet once a month and we are exploring everything from uh, certain movies, decoding it. It's and it's not just me speaking. It's like everybody is sharing their piece and these are incredible minds that are coming together um and and coming up with just really profound insights so um one of the first one we did was on uh telepathy and it was interesting to hear people's experiences uh emily um on on that because it's something that we're doing all the time mm -hmm. and uh, and this is the idea of the portal is to normalize this um super self as opposed to making it something out there that you're trying to get to, but the realization that you are doing it all the time. So the expansion portal, it's a members only uh, portal, and I've decided to make it members only for a reason. I want people that are really interested that, um, and, and we're doing a lot of the same kind of laughing, so it's not all serious. It's, <laughs> it's uh, hilarious, right? It's really funny. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to, if you want to, be part of that we're gonna be talking about the matrix the movies the matrix it came out they came out some time ago but it came out at a time when we were unfamiliar with computer language and a lot of that kind of technology technological information now we are more familiar and when you go back and you see the film there is so much information in there that is so completely relevant to now so we're doing that kind of thing and breaking down um, decoding films like that as it relates to now. So uh, yeah, so they can go to the real Sonia Barrett com to uh, become a member and it tells you all of the other features there. You know, there's free workshops that I put up and uh, different things that are available to those people who are members. And what else? Oh, and then I still do the monthly um, free teleconference. Uh, what is it? The first Wednesday of every month, Reality Wednesday where I do a talk and again, everybody gets to express themselves. Everybody gets to either ask questions or to talk. I'm real big on that. You know, I think that it's so important that it's not just the person who is supposed to be the person giving the, you know, the talk that's talking. I think that everybody has something to say, even when they don't realize that they have something to say mm -hmm. and uh, to express yourself is, uh, it, it, it becomes confirming for the, the person. It's like they get to see what they, who they are, more of who they are as opposed to just hiding and not wanting to say. So I really, op I really encourage that and I open it up for that. So that's Reality Wednesday and it's free. You just get on the website and sign up to be notified of the first, on the first Wednesday of, of every month and to be able to participate. And I got, I'm going to be doing a one day, a one day retreat in, Los Angeles. I haven't done anything in LA in a very long time. Uh, and I believe that's January 26th. It's a Saturday. And that information is, is on the website um, as well. But it's, yeah, that's going to be great. And we do the um, retreats, the yearly retreats in, um, in August. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And um, 
yeah, and there and there are some prerequisites you'll see on the site um, if you were interested in attending. Uh, and I find that that's really important because the retreats are so different that um, I, I want whoever shows up to align and uh, you know with where we where everybody else is because it's it's a different kind of group and it's yeah. not the usual. And the retreat this year is in Sequoia, right? It's in the Sequoias. It's actually this time it's five days. It's it's two days. We're gonna camp for two days, uh, and we we stay on a property. So you're still we're still on that property, but then we leave and we camp in the Sequoias for two days, uh, and we we're just gonna have a great time. We camp. Before, we did the Sequoias a couple of years back, uh, but we everybody loved it so much that we decided to go back, and we went to Crystal Cave when we were there the last time and we're going to go to Mora Rock this time and, and do that as well. And some other things, and that's all on the website. And then, and this, that one, the space is always very limited because you get a lot of the same people um, that are coming. And when anybody kind of connects with us, then they kind of want to go again. So then the space gets really limited and I don't make it this gigantic thing. I like it to be intimate. So I generally keep it um, 20 people or under. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we, we always stay in a massive, beautiful house, mm -hmm. beautiful property. Uh, that's all part of it for me. And, and we usually are by ourselves. So oh, we can totally, there was nobody around for miles. <laughs> <laughs> usually this is what we do. There's nobody around for miles so that we could just let loose and, and laugh and just, feel good. So I, I think I covered it. I may have left yeah. something up. I highly recommend the retreat to, to people, but I would also say that it, it isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's good you have prerequisites and uh, that it's not for everyone is not a judgment on anybody being better or more advanced or whatever. But my, my takeaway, I mean, I took a lot of stuff away, but my takeaway on where you have to be in order to be able to enjoy and appreciate and really get the full experience from it is you have to be in a place where you're willing to let go of narratives. Um, I think that's the biggest thing, you know, where you're either already have let go of narratives or you're ready to, you're, you know, ready to once you walk in the door, if you have some story about reality or yourself that you're really clinging to, it's going to be, yeah, well, it's not the place for not going to be comfortable for you because, you know, then the other thing is, is you have to be really comfortable with, a lot of laughing and a lot of laughing about serious topics, which not everyone is. You know, I'd say that the ratio of like, like very serious, like serious voice and talking uh, to the amount of time we're laughing and having fun is about 15 minutes of serious for 45 minutes of laughing. <laughs> but there is a lot of really important, very serious quality information being circulated during that laughing time. And, and you need to be in a space where you know, you're able to absorb both things at the same time, right? Yeah, absolutely. The humor in it and the, you know, the serious reality of it. And, and what's so great is that um, it might seem like you're, you're, you're not doing anything, but okay. there's so much intense information that is going around. And as intense as it is, is as ridiculous as we get in terms of, you know, humor. But I think that, it, it happens for this balance. And, and I think it makes it so much easier for us to flow mm -hmm. when we're not so rigid and stuck so we can laugh. And then we go to, you know, um, incredible bits of, of information, cutting edge in, information. Mm -hmm. And, and what is fascinating is people's experience after the retreat. I mean, it's, it's generally everybody goes through a process it doesn't look like it but then when you leave the retreat you go through like some kind of change happens uh, mm -hmm. for everybody so what i decided to do because of that is um i decided that after the retreat i would wait a couple of weeks and then we um get together for at least two just two gatherings um webinar style uh like in, in zoom platform webinar style so that people can express and share if there's something that they're going through. Because yeah. all your stuff, you're breaking down things that you don't even know you're breaking down. Mm -hmm. Just the magic of laughter and lightness. And it's an incredibly loving group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it will be different. It, and the other thing is these are 
going to be different people than who are part of your normal crew regularly, right? And so, and it's interesting because you're like, wow, this is different. Okay, this isn't what I expected. And then when you left, you're like, oh, well, like maybe this is a better crew for me than the crew that I've been with, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, and, and, and there's some folks there that will tell you some truth about yourself that like, <laughs> it's a little uncomfortable for a minute, but if instead of like, taking it personally, you just kind of laugh about it, then you can actually have the opportunity to observe yourself and go, you know what, that is ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah, I can true. change it if I want, or I can just enjoy being ridiculous. And that's fine. Either way is fine. Yeah. You know? Either way, either way, yeah. it's fine. Either way, it's yeah. chill. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I love it. And, and it doesn't, it, it isn't the usual construct. And I think that what, that's what could be um, kind of different for some people is you're used to, we're used to I, you know, I have to use the word structure. Um, we're used to a certain kind of structure and protocols uh -huh. um, as to how things are supposed to run. And, you know, you get this and you get a packet and, you know, we're, we're going to do this, you know, come out, we're going to talk at 10 o'clock and then we're going to eat lunch at 11. And, you know, and, and so you, you have to be fluid because suddenly you, we could turn around and we could be, talking like some major stuff and i have seen it at so many retreats now where the intensity of what we're talking about suddenly people get hungry you're mm -hmm. it's amazing how much energy you're actually yeah. using or up or you're sitting around goofing being silly yeah. even maybe having a drink right, right. and then suddenly some the topic gets extremely serious and intense and all of a sudden it's like whoo everybody closes it into a right. tight little circle and then and, and the other thing that was nice is like at some point I think with, with almost no exceptions during the weekend, there was an opportunity for you to take care of someone or everyone else in terms of like, you know, there was not, oh, breakfast is ready at 10 and Sonia or someone Sonia is hired. Right. Like some, one day I was making stuff and everybody seemed to want everybody, some, so I shared it right. Then I was making a margarita for me and a few people and then everyone decided they wanted it. So we got more stuff and so, right. and, and, you know, and, and some people, you know, People um, pitch in. Everybody, people, and I, I tend in. to leave a trail behind me. And there were some people that were kind enough to clean up behind me and not even <laughs> mind doing it. When I tried to say, no, no, wait, let me do it. They were like, no, it's okay. It's funny and cute to pick up after you. And yeah. you know what I mean? So right. which, like, it's embarrassing for me, but like they didn't make me, you know, the one, yeah. the one I got teased a little bit, but it was teased in a loving manner. Right, you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. It's cool. You know, that's, that's how it's always been. They come and people um, uh, sit around. I mean, they, they just start cooking. Is anybody, I'm making such and such. Does anybody want some? Yeah. They're like, yeah. And so it's that, that kind of thing. Everybody looking out for uh, each other and uh, barbecuing, um, you know, one yeah. of gentleman that's there you know he was doing the barbecue but but it's just great because it's 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 like family yeah. it's kind of in a way how it you know how it really does feels like family. And also the other thing that was cool is like some people like have some things that are just like the way they like to do stuff and on certain like you know like certain things that they like to eat and they don't like what everyone else is going to eat right. so they need to take care of that on their own off to the side and nobody made them feel bad about it or like they weren't being everyone's right. like whatever you gotta do to be happy just do that and be happy you know so yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, and that's its flow. And this is the this is the core of this. It's it's flow. We're not in flow most of the time. We're not used to flow. We are we are used to something completely different. And then suddenly it's like, oh, it's too fluid. You know, I, I where, where's where's the structure? Where you know where's the guidelines here? Um, I feel like I'm flying. You know, just you know out there. Um, and, and for somebody, it could feel like that. So on the website, there are some workshops. There are like three or four workshops in my book. I'm like, you know, you need to either have read this or taken this workshop. You just need to get an idea as to how I, you know, kind of operate. Uh, and that's one reason why I'm doing the, one of the things why I want to do the one day retreat also in Los Angeles. This is to give people just a sense of what that feels like. If you've never gone to the retreats, just a little bit of a taste as to what that, um, what that yep. feels like. And yeah, if you can't handle it for one day, you can't handle it for five kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you can't, if you can handle it for one day, you still might not be. <laughs> <laughs> and then we went a great time. We went to this, we did the sweat lodge. We did yep. the medicine wheel. I mean, so we were awesome. out. And, yeah. yeah. We, we, and, and even when we went camping, we had such a great time, everybody putting up their tents and um, I didn't know they were going to love it. They're like, can we do this again? 
yeah. you know, I was like, wow, people who really didn't even care for camping, suddenly they're like, no, yeah. I'm, gonna do it again. I, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of sleeping outside. So I'm going to have to <laughs> overcome some issues for that one. <laughs> You're not, a, there, there's another person too. There's a couple of people, one, yeah. one more person. She's like, well, I, I dealt with the spiders when we went to um, Joshua Tree, because we're out in the desert again, you know, yeah. Joshua Tree, and um, she, bugs, because she's yeah. scared of bugs. And, and so that was that, but she's like, I did it, I did it, I did it. But it's yeah. so, you so want to hang with us? Yeah. That's just like, you're like, I, I'm going to get through this. I heard you telling her, you can stay back at the house if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. All right. So, anyway, so we covered it. I just want to say to you guys, this was not a promotional piece for Sonia here. I just, uh, because she, we've spent so much time with her here on the show, like I, you know, really want to invite people to come and see what this experience is like. And, you know, this information that she writes about and talks about and puts out and involves in her webinars, this is really like, she's living the things she talks about. Like I'm fortunate enough to spend personal time with her and these are the things we talk about. I mean, you get more, probably even more ridiculous than anyone needs to well, know we about. Hiking. We've gone hiking a couple of times. We just went hiking the other day too, a couple of days, yeah. a few days so ago. So, you know, these are the things that, you know, really like she's living it and she, you know what I mean? So she talks about what's important to her and what she's living and she wants to share with people. So, you know, um, check it out guys. All right. All right. So uh, yeah. we're going to get into this, this article that Sonia wrote back in, I believe 2010 called enough with this blissed out agenda. And somehow it is, still relevant and possibly more relevant than it was then. And I, I did have thoughts, you know, we're talking about, you know, mostly about sort of the new age agenda and we'll get into it. But while I was reading it, I was like, the one thing that is sort of different, but it also applies to that now than when you wrote it is that for some people, it's not the new age agenda, it's the virtual reality or the tech agenda, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like the same things you're talking about could be applied to that reality that has been erected as well. Mm -hmm. um, so with those things in mind, we can get into it a little bit. And, you know, I don't know if maybe you wanted to start by letting people know, like, you know, you really, you kind of came on the scene at a very, about the same time that the new age stuff started to go from like, more of like an underground fringy kind of thing to like, suddenly like a, um, a commodity, like a, you know, something being really marketed and, and really, you know, being pushed on a certain level. And mm -hmm. you were coming with some concepts and ideas that, on a certain level seem like that they're related, but once you really dig into them, have almost nothing to do with that, with, with anything going on in the new age agenda. So why don't you kind of talk about like what, what, what you're speaking about, how, how sort of, what, what aspects of this agenda, we all kind of know the new age, light, fluffy, you know, love is light kind of BS, but like what you're really talking about in terms of the carrying away of a group of people that are, you know, some of whom are genuinely looking to find themselves and find higher truths and how they've just been sort of picked up and swept away with this agenda. Well, let's see. Um, you know, okay. So I came on the scene technically in 2007 to the end of 2007 is when I really came on the scene. Very fresh. Um, I had been, you know, sort of closeted. Um, I knew since it. Like 1992. <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but I figure I'd just come out on your show. <laughs> oh. I could just come out on your show. Uh, yeah, it was 1992. I'd just been on my own. Um, just really didn't know anything about metaphysical people and groups and stuff like that. So anyway, so uh, come 2007, and I'm done with the book, and I and I come out. Well. Yeah, it was very different. What I was talking about was very different than what people, other people are talking about. I'm talking, I'm questioning death. I mean, things that are more, you might hear about it more, but back then you didn't. I'm talking about technology. I'm talking about, you know, everything is, you know, is, is technology and what technology is. And, and just outrage, what would have been considered outrageous possibilities. And when I use the word outrageous, I think we have to, we have to, 
uh, change the definition in our mind because we think outrageous, it's crazy or whatever. No, outrageous for me is just going completely outside the box that's been created. And you have to have outrageous thinking because it is an outrageous imagination that got us here and, and, and created this, this thing that we call existence. So outrageous is to do Yes, to do the unim almost the unimaginable and uh, in your thinking. Um, and so anyway, I, I, when I wrote the Enough with this Bus Data Agenda in 2010, I think it, it was at a point where uh, I was looking around and I was just like, oh my gosh, enough with this mask, these, you know, everybody's wearing with everything being so... Um, coddled and so and everybody wants this idea of spirituality to be this this thing you know this this almost like this perfect little concept and all of that and so that's where I was coming from and my work has always come from that direction though where if everybody goes left I go right but I'm always like wanting to remove coverings you know remove um uh, the the uh, yeah, well, I can't think of another word, but the, the covering over the veil, everything, the veil. the veil, the veil. So people can go ahead and just own themselves, own the truth about yourself. And I, I felt that much of the blissed out stuff is, um, was, was sort of helping to, in a way, retard people um, mm -hmm. a bit because they were, they were getting so hypnotized by by that kind of safe, you know, those safe thinking and safe ideas. Again, not that any of this is right or wrong. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I saw the, the effects of that kind of thinking, that, that kind of behavior, and it, 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 how it casts people more into judgment of good or bad and right or wrong and, and who's more spiritual and who's not. And Emily said earlier that that also translates to other things. Because we are such an addictive um, species, we, we are habitual, we, we, we like trends and themes. So we tend to, um, to behave like that with anything we sort of sink our teeth into. We, you know, that becomes our religion. Basically, we turn everything into. I was going to say, we're talking yeah. about the creation of new, hipper, right. cooler, more well-packaged forms of the same BS. It's the same, it's the same thing. It's, it's all the same thing. And, and that's what people do. Um, and, you know, and, and we see that with food. We see that with, you know, being vegan, being um, vegetarian, being, uh, what was the other thing? Raw food. Mm. Um, you know, all, all of these things become, and, and it's not that anybody's saying don't do it. But again, when you look at the idea of, of blissed out, it's, it is this packaged um, expression, this packaged behavior that, that tends to happen. And, and, and being, not that you can't feel bliss, you know, you know, what is bliss? But not that you can't feel that. But I'm saying that it's very easy for us to fool ourselves into um, this idea of feeling so blissed out simply because we are ignoring a lot of times, other things. Yeah, a lot of times, especially with a lot of this new age kind of cults and, you know, whatever, like they talk about, you know, when we ascend or when we reach the golden age and everything yes, will be perfect. Baby. And when you, you know, think positively enough. The city so, of lights going. Right, to the city of yeah. Lights. So yeah. like there, you know, then like, then you will have bliss and that bliss will be long and permanent and no one will be able to touch it. And a thousand years of peace. Right. And, you yeah. know, I've, I'm a person who's experienced a, a fair amount of bliss in my life, but I've also experienced a fair amount of harshness, a fair amount of pain, a fair amount of struggle. And there's not ever going to come a time. I don't, I don't want, nor do I believe that there's ever going to come a time in my life where I only experience bliss and never experience those things. Like you have to have the gamut of experiences to appreciate bliss when you have it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And also, but also like if you're just blissed all the time after a while, it's boring. You see people who like seem like they have a perfect life and then they go and destroy it. Right. They go and they do something that just blows the whole thing. Right. And a lot of time it's because they're bored. They haven't mm -hmm. been challenged to expand themselves further. Mm -hmm. Expansion requires discomfort. 
And that's the word you just said is challenge yourself. You have to have some tension. You have mm-hmm. to have some, um, to some degree, some opposing force there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, you must have that because that's what propels us. So to have the sameness all the time, you know, we just want to have, you know, peace all the time. Well, you think about it, it, it really doesn't make any sense. I think where the challenge really comes in is the identification of the experiences. If we could just be, and that's, I think that, that was part of um, the core of some of these ancient practices, these, these uh, like, like even core Buddhism, I'm not talking about Buddhism of, of now per se, but these, these core, um, yeah, these core practices was about being that's what being is mm-hmm. when we say to to just be when you're being everything comes and goes what you we would normally have judged as a good or bad or positive or light or dark or whatever that judgment goes away and you simply are allowing yourself to mm-hmm. move through And because of that, you're not pinning any one emotion down. The minute you pin down an emotion, okay, well, this is, this is good, or this is whatever. This is good. This is bad. I am this, I am that. That's right. right. Then, then you, you as the observer, again, as, as um, they say in quantum physics, you as the observer, you, you have um, solidified, you have crystallized a particular experience. You have sort of created this, this portal, Mm -hmm. you know, um, based on that particular belief that you're now stuck on. Mm -hmm. Uh, And anything that's outside of that now, now becomes, uh, you have to defend yourself. So we end up in this war, Mm -hmm. right? That's how we end up in this war with good, bad, light, dark, want to be happy, want to be whatever. We actually are causing this, we are creating this. Mm -hmm. But, and and I'm saying this because yes, I've, I've been working with that. I have been working with it. And I understand in the very beginning how challenging that could be to start moving yourself into that space, that neutral space, um, you know, where you, things happen and show up in your, in your moment and you allow them, you allow it to move through as opposed to why, well, I don't know why this is happening to me. You know, the minute you start going into those kinds of, um, uh, uh, definitions and, and that kind of locking yourself in the minute that becomes something else, because now you, you have asked the question, what does this always happen to me? I always get the end of the stick or I always get treated a certain way. So right away, there's some law that's coming uh-huh. out of your mouth right it's there. A law. Yeah. That's exactly. So now the, the experience has to feed you has to support that it has to support what you are you continue to identify as something that always happens to you because what do you say it always happens to you so if it always happens to you then it always has to happen to you and the only way it's going to happen to you is for things to happen to verify Mm -hmm. that it always happens to you and it, it sounds so silly but you know what i've tested it and yeah and and the and the more that i can see in the moment, which is why we did in the reprogramming experiment, is the observe. If you could just observe, it's like, okay, now I'm observing this. I'm observing as opposed to going in and, and judging the whole process, it moves by faster. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so so the idea, getting back to that article, the idea is you get the idea of the blissed out. I mean, I didn't know if you want me to identify you know, I identified a lot of things in the article I did and in that particular article. Um, well, one of the things that you brought up was this, and I think this is pertinent to a lot of stuff, this idea of like people have about, who are part of like new age kind of groups about healing the world and healing mother earth and making everything peaceful and, and <laughs> whatever. And you're just like, why don't you deal with your shit? Let's not <laughs> without that because I find it disturbing the level to which the new age movement has been sort of very carefully integrated and woven into the truth movement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so, and that isn't really what you said in so many clear words there, but it it kind of flows into that. So let's talk about that a little bit. And then I do want to talk a little bit about this, uh, the way that these two 
um, through certain avenues of information, there has been this blending of a new age agenda with the truth community. But let's 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 first. I don't start even, with, yeah, what's the truth community? I don't even know what's the truth community. There's not. I, I mean, I, I like the people. They say there is one. I haven't found I, one. Yeah, I I didn't <laughs> even know that there was one. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> no, but <laughs> but, but the, the, healing the earth. Let's go back for a second to, to heal people who are oh really concerned with taking care of the environment and healing the earth and stopping war and all this kind of stuff, but their, their, their shit is a mess. It's a dis because you know what? We like to distract ourselves from mm -hmm. know thyself. We like to do that. And so, and because we are so programmed to externalize, to do everything that has to do with outside of ourselves, it makes us feel like we're doing something. And I think that's a big thing with people. It makes them feel like they're doing something. And uh, some people, it makes them feel special. Mm -hmm. You have people that say um, it's like they're they're so they're more spiritual. Um, this is what they do. And these are people that I've run into over the years. This is this is what they do. Is one woman in particular many years ago, um, and she was just fascinating because. Her thing was, she's like, yeah, well, that's, and, and that's kind of what I'm here to do um, is, is to her, uh, heal the earth and, and um, to bring light and love. And <laughs> she, there was just one of these women. <laughs> <laughs> but back then it was, it was kind of newer to me. And I was like, yeah. wow, you know, but that would be her thing. She's healing the earth and bringing light and love. Um, and that was something she needed to work through, but she didn't know that she needed to work through that. It's like, you have some things that you need to deal with, and I could see that. But when, when she spends so much time on thinking that she's, gonna, she's needing to do this, and that was her mission, because there are people that do feel that. Their mission is to come here and to heal the earth and to do all of these things. Well, let's put it this way. In order for that person to even begin to feel like the the earth needs healing apparently that some stuff has to happen so it's happening for a reason so that you can get to feel like you need to heal the earth and save people and save the planet and so the, in the article it was like planet doesn't need saving planets that mother earth has this stuff taken care of and i did say she basically will just belch everybody off if she wants to, mm -hmm. you know? So I did say, stop singing Kumbaya. And how about you stop singing Kumbaya and just get your SHIT together. Well, isn't that the truth? Isn't the yeah. most spiritual thing you can actually do is get your shit together. Yeah. That's how you can help mother earth. <laughs> really, honestly, that's how you can help her. That's like the, yeah. the, you know, I don't, I'm you probably heard his name at least, but I'm sure it's not really information that you're that interested in but that guy who's been you know risen to celebrity status the last year and a half two years named jordan peterson right like oh, he know. talks about a lot of stuff but like he has this book that's very popular called 12 rules for life and mm -hmm. the like one of the rules is clean your bedroom right yeah. like don't worry about going out and saving the world and all the social justice stuff and all that kind of stuff if your room is a disaster yeah and that's what's going on that's yeah. just precisely what's going on everything that i've seen people with health issues there's it's clear that they've got some major health issues they've got major weight issues which um from because i can see people um i could clearly see that was a lot of that those that person was holding on to or these people mm -hmm. the number of people i've seen over the years the things that they're holding on to um that was not being released uh so they sometimes end up with you know a disease or some some sort of illness but at the same time, they were spending so much time running around uh, doing all this other thing that they thought was about saving, saving the earth and, you know, wearing their light worker outfits. And <laughs> you don't like, was it like a one piece jumpsuit or what was it? <laughs> it's not orange. Was it a unitard? New, it's not orange is the new black. No, it's not. <laughs> no, but was it like one of those like tight bodysuit unitard things? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was again, and, and I always have to put out the disclaimers. I, I love crystals, have nothing to do with the stones, but what what I'm looking at, see there's a difference between I'm wearing this, oh my gosh, it's a beautiful piece. It, it has great energy as opposed to piling on things um, to look the part and mm -hmm. to tell yourself, 
um, that how these, you know, stones are going to whatever with, with your life. I mean, there's, right. it's, it's kind of tricky, but you know what I'm saying? It's kind of tricky. There is truth to it with the power of the crystals, sure. but at the same time, we as human beings, because we run from our, from ourselves so much, we distort that. We uh-huh. find a way to use it as an excuse to not really deal with ourselves. So now we've got the look. We've got the look of somebody uh, that's supposedly spiritual, the protocols of all of that stuff. And like, you know, people yeah. with a lot of crystals on and they sort of stink because they're not, they're using like homemade deodorant and, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And they haven't brushed their hair in six months because they're, you know, or they haven't washed their hair in six months because they're trying to save water. <laughs> they, about, you can practice through them because all they eat is kale, right? Oh my God. Well, I wasn't, but now that you said that. <laughs> Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's what I'm saying. It's a combination of of all of these different things with people. It's just a combination. And I think at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, it's okay to to see who you are. It's okay to just own yourself. It's okay that you you don't have to like fit into any protocol for um being you know is spiritual as a matter of fact you could just toss out that word all everybody labels. is yeah like everybody all the labels and just be you you're sonia i'm emily and yeah. create whatever canvas of character of of or, or person that you want whatever do. be your work own work of art and just throw out all the names and all the nonsense and all the labels and all the role playing and all the you know, I have a friend who calls it like uh, sending your representative, right? Stop with the representative <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and, and again, so then here we go. We get that that's all part of the game. That's all part of it. Everything you've done, every character we've played, I've played characters too. I mean, I, you know, we all have a core character. Well, you're but being I, alien tonight. Yeah, well, that's not just tonight. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the main role. Right, that's, a, that's, that's typically my main role. But, <laughs> yeah, this is like cosplay right now, but <laughs> but but yeah. So so that's what we're saying. It's it's just saying, in the in the end, what frees you is you allowing yourself to be. Mm-hmm. It's it's that is really the the freedom because that's what everybody's looking for. Everybody's looking to feel liberated. Mm-hmm. Everybody's looking to feel freedom. Uh, but unfortunately, that freedom and liberation shows up for people. With, it's just another illusion, another another um, yeah, another packaged thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then it happens so often, so often. But then it's very challenging to see that this is what is going on with you. If you're not open to sitting with yourself and going, okay, let me, let me observe. Let me see myself. Oh, is that how I think? Oh, wow. Is that how I act? Is that how I behave? Oh, wow. And, and not judging yourself, but you're seeing, you're seeing so that you can move forward in making those changes. So we're talking about the mask. Basically, that's what we're talking about. This is all these masks. And then, and then that kind of movement wants everybody else to get on board everybody else to get on board now they think their job is to get everybody else um on board for this particular thing and then you have different levels of it you have um you yes you do have the i call it the new age click there's Mm -hmm. a there's a clicky group they're everywhere you Mm -hmm. see them you know it's i won't name them but there's there's this clicky new age group and everybody knows these names and you know they're doing and saying the same thing all the time um and 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 so there's a level there where they even have like their own language that is like full of all sorts of nlp stuff but they have this very particular use of certain kinds of language that is flowery and when you actually like listen to them talk like it sounds really interesting and you almost feel stupid because you don't understand all of it but you just realize that they just talked to you in a circle and spoke for an hour and didn't actually say a thing (laughs) <laughs> that is one level and then there's the middle level and then there's the conspiracy level there i mean there's like all these levels there's about four levels in there mm-hmm. of um of people that are running around in in a way that is more than anything else distracting and again that's why you will hear that this person 
was like, wow, how did this, that person end up getting that disease or something? What, what happened? But they, so were so this in your mind, they were so whatever your idea of what spiritual is. Remember now you're, you're, you've got this perception, right? And, and so you, you're locking these people into this, whatever they've, they're just like a show. They sell you a character, just like all the movie stars. They, their uh, managers or, or handlers create a, um, a persona. And mm -hmm. this is what they sell to you. And no different than everything else. You're sold that. And so I'm saying, observe that this is what is going on. This is why people end up in these different situations. Not, not knocking them that, oh, they got a disease. I'm saying this is what happens to all of us when we can't go ahead and own who we are and um, be okay with the things that we've experienced in our lives and, and say, okay, that was then, this is now, and learning how to, to move through that. That's what frees us. It frees our cells. It down, you know, right down to the very cells, the DNA. We start to remove this, uh, this weight, this anchor, this energy that sort of anchors us in into a density. Mm -hmm. That is what is is needed, and that's why laughing is such an incredible medicine. Because when when we laugh at mm -hmm. things that would normally be considered so serious, it, it decrystallizes it. It, mm -hmm. it just breaks it down and your body gets a chance to release even more. That's why when people leave, they don't realize how much they have actually released. So what you were saying earlier, when somebody says, this always happens to me, then that crystallizes it. And then like, so let's just say for the sake of discussion, that there is a thing that always happens to somebody, right? That does, that does happen sometimes. If you can laugh about it to where it becomes funny, right, then that sort of decrystallizes it and suddenly it may not be happening anymore. Or you may learn to appreciate that it happens, right? So, right. I mean, the, the being able just to laugh, even, you know, laugh about something can take something that is a less than pleasant thing and turn it into a humorous thing that eventually you may come to appreciate or, or you know, enjoy in some way, right? Well, it removes the seriousness from it. Because remember mm -hmm. now that what a seriousness represents S to be serious about something requires focus mm -hmm. right what is focus attention what does science say it is the the focus it's the attention it's um that's what allows everything to show up you, exist, you yeah. exactly so that's what you're doing so when you laugh Actually, you are re allowing those particles, uh, if it's a physical thing or whatever it is, you're allowing that energy to actually just dissipate because you're not solidifying it. it everything is waiting, you know, it's like, wow, your attention. Oh, my attention is on it. That is my cue that to, to, um, to manifest. That's my cue to, that to produce that particular thing. Uh, we, we do it all the time. I always like to point out um, all that we, we don't see. We, you know, we go by things, we don't see it. Eh, is it there until we need it? Well, that's what's been said. Is anything there until you need it? Probably not. Right. Uh, so when we need the street that we never see, it, you know, boom, oh, I didn't know it was there before. Oh, I didn't know that building was there before. I think nothing is mm -hmm. really there until it is needed. Now, collectively, yes, there's some things that we have agreed on and have held focus on. And so they are there as part of um, this construct that we it's identify like we as reality. We think up with each other or something. Abs we, exactly. It's, it's, the, it's the process that allows this particular human experience. So yes, there are some things that we, you know, we agree that a chair is a chair, you know, what it looks like and, and, and all of these various things but it requires our focus, our undivided, our attention, paying attention. When we say we pay attention, you put focus. And what do you pay with? You pay with um, your um, emotional currency, mm -hmm. you know, your energy. You are a power plant. And, and therefore, because you're a power plant, your whole life is plugged into you. Mm -hmm. No different than you plug, a, plug in, a, in a socket your life, your reality is plugged into you and you charge everything up. Mm -hmm. So you are the one charging up 
your reality. All, your reality and, and your reality is waiting for you to give, give uh, a command, uh, set a law. And mm-hmm. when I say law, I am talking about how such some, what we mentioned earlier, how you will say, we say things over and over and over again, not realizing how often we've said it until it has become a law in our reality. And yeah. our brain says, oh, this is normal. This is our normal right? Mm -hmm. So reality keeps showing up for us like that. It keeps showing us because you've created this law. So it shows up that way. Not only does it show up that way, but your brain has a blueprint of what you define as normal of what reality is. And this normal, this normal life, and you get up. So we get up every day into the same life. Every day we get up into the same life because that is the blueprint we've created until we stop. Now, the, that was the next part of this reprogramming um, experiment is to then move into this other level. They People moved into this other level. Now that you've seen, you've observed, you've seen, and what it took to begin to change these particular things and to, um, to the, what you're changing to has to now become a habit. Mm-hmm. Be- because we operate based on what programs, mm-hmm. right? A habit becomes is a program. Uh, it becomes habitual. So it's not that we're saying you you throw out the pro- uh, you know you can't program yourself. It's what you program yourself with. Because it's it, what you program it with, and then allowing for evolution over time, allowing absolutely for, growth. You have yeah. to expand on it. You you when we when I say program, when I say you bring in a new habit. I'm always saying you bring, you keep bringing latitude mm-hmm. to, yeah. um, to everything you do. You know, I always say if you, if you used to go left every day to go to work, maybe you go right another time. And maybe if you go right, maybe you take a side street, but you're constantly mm-hmm. creating new neural pathways in your yeah. brain. And that's the only way you can, yeah, yeah, you, you've got to do that by giving it new things. It needs to, to have fluidity flow, right? Absolutely. Stretchy and bendy and yeah. And, and that's what you do. Otherwise, when we don't do that and it's the same thing over and over, we, this is how we run the risk of actually it ages us. Um, it, we run the risk of, um, uh, uh, it's like calcification, uh-huh. it's calcify because there's no flow. There's uh-huh. no fluidity, which actually affects the, the actual chemistry of the body. Um, the flow of the body, the hormones that are supposed to Is be. Is this why when people are at a spot where they really need to make a, 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 a transformation, an internal, personal, spiritual, whatever kind of transformation because mm-hmm. they want to, they want to grow and they want to sort of expand, but they have, you know, for whatever reasons, either haven't been allowed to or have not allowed themselves to. And if they don't, you know, really do it when they're feeling that they need to, then they begin to have health problems, right? Yeah, the absolutely. Break down when they were perfectly healthy before, but they just didn't make that shift that they needed to make. They didn't make the shift they needed to make. And because this, it's, it's flow. It's like stagnant water, okay? Mm-hmm. If the water is not moving, it's not running, it's going to get stagnant. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's literally what happens in the body. Like the lymphatic fluid gets stagnant. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a whole system starts to get stagnant. The whole system is affected. The, um, the electricity to the cells um, get affected. And, and so we need to keep that in mind as to how this whole system is working. Uh, and, and in saying that, we then have to realize that what we keep talking about is the mechanism itself, is, is the body. It's the body itself, because it's the only way that we can experience this reality anyway, is to process this reality, as we've talked about before, through the sensory system. So that's really important. And, and so the system requires, yes, it requires that kind of um, programming, that kind of reprogramming, putting in the ideal kind of information um, in it uh, in order to, as you shift, as we shift, you know, we are constantly making those changes. And that's why you need to do new things. And that's why I, when I wrote, when I did that seven day uh, program and wrote the, um, it's a, the little handbook called Simple Ways to Step Outside of Your Comfort Zone, Letting mm-hmm. Go of an Outdated Life. 
that was the idea of the topic, stepping outside of your comfort zone, um, letting go of an outdated life. And mm -hmm. what you said a few minutes ago about people is that why they start getting sick because they're not letting go of an outdated life. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah not letting go. And what? And you need growth. You need, the, the body needs it to continue to produce the, those ideal hormones. Yeah. What happens when it doesn't oh, that's happen? Really interesting. You think yeah. that, that people with hormonal issues, it's partly caused by the fact that they are living an outdated life. Uh, I would say, yeah, I'd say wow. that there are things that, yeah, it's stagnation. It's stagnation just impacts you. You have to remember that the, um, I always tell people that what, what happens is the brain, you start getting shut down when we talk about, you know, people aging and dying or whatever. Um, and, and, and what happens, your brain, your brain, your whole being is looking for, is there a purpose? Is there a reason to be here? Is there a reason? Is there anything new coming in? And when I say, is there a reason I'm looking at, it's going, there's nothing new coming in. It's the same thing. It's the same thing over and over and over. There's nothing to continue the stimulation of that charge. Right. Right. So if there's nothing mm -hmm. new coming in, what's going to happen? Well, your brain, it's all going to start shutting. It's, it's going to gradually start, start it's shutting. It's shutting yeah. down the reality experience. And that's what we call expiring. We say death, but it's really expiring. The yeah. body expires, literally expires because you are not upgrading. You it's kind are of like not they upgrading. say how your cells regenerate every seven years. So yep. when they stop creating new cells, then you just kind of shrivel up and die. And it isn't so much that... Yeah, it's you yeah. get expired. It's I, yeah, it's not for the reasons that so, people think about, you know, death. It's 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 no different on a computer. There's no you have to keep upgrading. You don't upgrade, you see what happens. A computer doesn't work anymore because everything else has changed and the computer is running on software that um that it's just too slow. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. So gradually it just it just stops working. You have all these new websites you want to go to that have flash all these kinds of things going on on them and they, yeah. yeah. So do you also, so my kind of thing with this is if there's something that you are scared of, you need to run towards it. Yeah. Right. Like that's really the only way you can keep yourself from expiring or from, you know, living an outdated life is the, you know, the more nervous something makes you, I mean, without being stupid. Um, right. Right. More important yeah. that, you know, I find that like, I'm scared of something, you know, generally when I, you know, like, I, it's something I, I want to do, but I fear, fear failure. I fear what people might think, or I fear, you know, that it doesn't fit in with mm -hmm. what people thought of me or whatever. And, you know, that used to be stuff that I would shut myself in my room and hide from. And now it's just like, if I, the more terrified I am of something, I, the more convinced I am, I need to do it. And, and absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with that, um, I would definitely add this because I know that this is important because that's what I do with myself. If that is the case and you were thinking about other people, that to me is a core place to start because you have mm -hmm. to stop and you have to go, why am I, why am I scared to do this? Well, I don't want to fail. Well, what does fail mean for me? What does that look like in my mind? What does that look like? And what do I think is going to happen if I fail? What do I think people are going to say if I fail? When you, when you break it down like that, it takes you to a place. I always tell people it takes you to a place where eventually you run out of any points that make any sense. Yeah, and I see yeah. it all the time. It makes, yeah, you run out of points that make sense uh, and then you're left with nothing. So now you're free. Now you're free to go and do it. And then you might find out that you don't want to do it. Now that you are freed yourself to do it, now it doesn't matter. You know, and it's not right. the, you're not challenged anymore. Yeah. Um, and, and I've heard that from other people with, you know, it's like, how is it going to look? What people are going to think of me? And it's like, well, okay, so what happened if they thought you were, you know, you're an idiot? Okay, what happens then? This is, you ask yourself that question. So some of these things, I'm an idiot. Okay, well, what is, how does that affect you? Well, I'm going to feel bad. Well, what, is feeling, what does that feel like? What, is that, what do you mean by that when you say I'm going to feel bad? Well, I'm just going to feel like, you know, I'm kind of worthless. Okay, and how do you identify that? I mean, I'm telling you, you take it apart. Mm -hmm. You yeah. keep going. And when you go 
Um, and you, you go to that, that question, if you're going to run into a question that ends it all, because there's nowhere else to go. And yeah. I, because what do I always get to the point? And then I go, and then what? Yeah. I'm always, yeah. okay. And then what? Eventually uh, people just go, uh, cause then, and then nothing. And then yeah. you still live. <laughs> you yeah. know? I'm always like, and then you still live. Yeah. You know? You always bring it to back to that point where it takes you there. It's like, uh, and then you're still alive, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you're like, oh, whatever. I'm free to do it or not yeah, do it. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You well, and also some of these things that I've been afraid to do because of what people might think or, or whatever, like, or, or, or even some things that like I thought I never wanted to do. It sounded like the most unappealing thing to me, but it kept presenting itself to me for some reason. Right. And I had to stop ignoring it. And then I went and did it, or I allowed myself to do it, or I dropped mm -hmm. the deal. And it, not only did it become something that mm -hmm. I got over the fear, it became something I was actually really good at. Mm -hmm. And actually people didn't judge me in a negative way for it. They actually thought it was really cool. And the thing that I thought was going to ruin my life actually made my life way better. Yeah. See, yeah. absolutely. And, and when we, the more that we are able to do those things and we let go of what, because remember now, all that we are processing are scenarios in our head. That's all. Mm -hmm. We're making up stories, right? Yeah. We have no idea. It's just yeah. stories we're making <laughs> up in our heads about what we think people are going to think about us and all of that. Yeah. And when we are able to shut that down, people respond. Yeah, they do respond differently like favorable because guess what now they don't have to play out the story that you were writing yeah everybody is responding everybody is free yeah everybody's responding to the story that we have yeah. written. their job is to comply their job yeah. is to if you think yep. you feel like a loser and feel like crap their job is to ensure that you or validate that you're a loser and you feel like crap and you're, it's true. They're, that's, that's their job um, is to do that because you've, you've put that out there and how else are you going to keep saying that about yourself if you don't yeah. keep providing- have a supporting cast of characters to- Yeah, yep. to have those validations right. out there for it. And the minute you let it go, even in, in relationships, I've yeah. seen that. I, I, I mean, again, tested it firsthand in relationships you've got all these things in your head about the person and you know quietly and you know how they're treating you and what they're not doing and you know all this stuff and a lot of times that person has no idea what, what you're, you're talking about you yeah. i mean you like just have made up the story in your yep. head yep when you can dismiss the story you go why am i do i have any proof of this really no Okay, interpret and we will find proof. We will do that. We will find a way to validate our mm -hmm. scenarios, right? Yep. But if we can back up and we can see that, and I've seen it, I man, I've seen it in my in my life, in my relationship, where I got it, and when I got it, I was like, wow. Now it looked like that person changed, mm -hmm. but it's not that that person changed. That person did not have to um you freed them from you, the nonsense story you had constructed exactly that, yeah. that they had to participate in without realizing they're participating in and and everybody is then free to move forward again speaking of relationships relationships where people say um um that they are they're either staying in a relationship or whatever they tell themselves but what what people don't realize is that the best thing that you can do for the other party is to do what is best for you. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing that you can do. You want to help them. You move forward in whatever way you find necessary Yep. and, and not worry about, well, are they going to come along? Are they going to, no, 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 They're having to be what you think they are right now because of all that you've got going on in your head. Yep. You decided this is what I'm doing that person then has an opportunity to now move forward and move on. And you find that either you're more aligned or they go away. Yeah. <laughs> right? Really, yeah, either yeah. way, you, it begins with you. What yeah. do I want? What is it that I feel like I'm not getting in any relationship, whether it's in a job, I'm talking about anything. Yep. yep. Um, 
what am I, what do I feel is missing? It's not that other person that's yeah. supposed to supply you with any of this. It's yep. you, yep. it's you, what do I want? And, and then we start looking at um, the choices. I love bringing choice back into my life. I love when I can see that all the choices are really up to me. What I want to do, if I want to stay here, but we like to make it seem like it's the other person. Well, you know, I can't leave because of the kids or I've got to stay, you know, with my partner uh, because we have the business together. Right. Or we can, you know, it's like all the stuff. No, no. These are just things that you're telling yourself so that you can, because you're, you're comfortable with your misery, right? Yeah. That's it. We get oh, some people really like it. Yeah, you get comfortable. Plus, yeah. it's predictable. You know you're miserable, and that's guaranteed, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, yeah. So nothing's try, gonna nothing nothing's gonna happen, and there's a certain safety in that. There's a certain safety in it because you know yeah. tomorrow you get up and it's the same misery as yesterday, right? Yeah. So it's 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 recognizing that, and again, and coming back and going, what do I want? Yeah, I'm thinking about the kids or whoever, but what do I want? What am I feeling? Yeah. Oh, then you give the kids an opportunity to grow. Otherwise, the kids are going to be stuck with miserable. Things. Yep. And end up repeating your story. Yep. And up, now they, they're programmed with your stuff. Yep. And that's how it goes on and on from and generation. On on. generation. You stay, if you keep doing what you think you should do to please other people, then you're going to be unhappy ultimately. And so are they. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Misery. All right, guys. So we are at the. Uh, we went a little over here in the first hour, so maybe we'll do a little shorter in the second hour. But before we leave the public hour, tell people where they can find all that stuff we spoke about earlier. Um, it's therealsoniabarrett.com, therealsoniabarrett.com. Uh, everything uh, is on there. And I don't know when this will air, uh, but I know there's a holiday sale that I'm having. It's really big. It'll, it's it'll like, air within the next yeah. week, week and a half. Probably. Oh, okay. Well, um, there's, I think, th 30 to 50% off on... Um, on the website on, you know, on downloads and so on. So hopefully maybe by then they, you know, it still will be there. Uh, but so yeah, the real com is where you can find out everything and the business of disease.com for the movie. Yes. Yeah. Everybody should see. All right. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break real quick. And for the patrons, we'll see you on the other side. And if you're not a patron yet, please join us. Patreon.com forward slash off planet media. We'll see you on the other side. I'm Emily Moyer. This is off planet radio. We'll be back. I don't know. 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 I don't know.